back between two yetis. Fun? <laughs> I'm trying to... <laughs> and we are back between two yetis with Captain Tim Forderer. Lee, good to see you. Nice to meet you, sir. And we've just, we happen to come across you on a park bench. Yeah, you know, sleeping on that park bench. <laughs> <laughs> and we're at the Palm Beach Boat Show. Yeah, beautiful day. Absolutely amazing to see the crowd, the turnout, the beautiful yachts. Uh, it's hard when it's this perfect, isn't it? It is. It's amazing. You know, we, we have a great life here, huh? We're very fortunate to be you, a part of this. you live here as well? No. I came in from San Diego, California to be here. So, okay. All right, San Diego. It's billed as like the paradise on earth because yeah. it never rains and it's, it's like this yeah. right you know i've lived ashore for seven months now for the first time in 15 years wow yeah. okay yeah. so for the last 15 years i've uh had the opportunity to circumnavigate the world two and a half times to the north pole down to antarctica on a private yacht as a captain <laughs> and the amazing thing is along the way we went to the most remote places of the world and along the way, you just can't help but notice the contrast between a yacht and, and you know, people that don't have yachts. Yeah. And, but really, we, we uh, every step of the way, every port we went into, we got involved. And as a result of that, I met Mark and the founder of Yacht A Global. All right, so this is, not your claim to fame, but this is your, like, your drive. It's my mission right now. Yeah. yeah. So you're a global. I just yeah. call it YAG, but that seems it's like okay. it's a faux pas. Okay. Is that it's not okay. quite? No. No. Well, we'd love to people people to know right now. Yachty Global. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, so Yachty right. Global. So, all right. So how did how, who came up with the idea? Well, Mark Drelau. He's the founder, and it's Is another it out of guilt, or was it? <laughs> no. <laughs> or a sense of I need to give back. <laughs> He's a hugely empathetic person, and uh, you know, a, a dear friend and a mentor in what we're doing right now. And I'm proud to be associated with him. And them. you were a captain on his boat? No, how, how it came to be, and it's a great story. He was a captain for 15 years. And oh, he's he, a captain as well? He was, yeah, he right. is. He is. As he was moving ashore, transitioning to having a family and starting a business, which is a very successful yacht agent ship called Sea to Sea in, in San Diego, California. It takes care of all the super yachts right. as they go through the Panama Canal and, and head west or, or north. He wanted to give back and created Yacht A Global as, a, as, as the way to do that. And it's a great story how I came to know Mark. It was about uh, eight years ago, nine years ago now. I was sailing into Indonesia, which is absolutely one of my favorite parts of the world, to cruise. You don't see any other yachts. It, you have these amazing, authentic places to yourself. I wanted some advice on how to get involved in the communities there. And I was referred to Mark. So we chatted and he gave me some advice. And a couple days later, we were in Komodo National Park, home of the Komodo dragons. Home of the dragon, yeah. Absolutely stunning place. And, and the diving. It's amazing that you get to go to all these places. Uh, uh, it, it, if you could crawl inside of my mind and my heart with the experiences. And yeah. that's what I'm trying to leverage right now, is those relationships and those firsthand experiences and get everybody to do what I found to be the most fulfilling aspect of my life and my boating career over the last 12 years. So it's, when, it's when you leave, when you get involved yeah. in the communities, your experience is so much more rich. That's the, no, no, the we, nature we, we of We speak our show. the same language. Yeah. We speak the same language. So, you get these 10, 20, 50 million, 100 million dollar yachts, load them up with water and tools and stuff like that, and actually go and engage tribes? I mean, how remote do you go? Well, it, it, it takes on many different aspects, but I'll finish the story about Mark and I as an example. So I, I'm, we're donating these school supplies at the Komodo National Park, and at this time they had no water. They, they had to go to different islands to get water. They had no electricity. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So after we donated the school supplies and medical supplies. like, what, books and pens, or is that? It's very basic stuff that you and I take for granted. After we did that, the teacher came up to me and said very, very emotionally, I said, Tim, we need more help. Looking out of the boat and seeing our resourcefulness and our generosity, and I said, sure, you know, you've got my heart looking at these kids. I said, well, what do you need? 
He said, we need a fence around the school. And I look out in this cinder block building, dirt floor, holes in the roof of school, had a half a rickety bamboo fence. And I said, okay, why is this so important? The teacher said to me, right now, the teachers spend half of their time teaching the kids and the other half of the time keeping the Komodo dragons out of the dumpster. from eating the kids. From eating the kids? From eating the kids. Hang on. So I thought a Komodo dragon was like the size of an iguana or something like that. No, they're a bit bigger. <laughs> and they're dangerous. They're as big as, they're about four yetis. Holy so, wow. you know, you hear something like that coming from the world that you and I come from, dragon eating So it's kids. an alligator type That's thing. compelling. Drag, no, it's huge. It's like a rhinoceros alligator. They're huge. They're big. Wow. And, and, but then you think about it, you know, okay, that's compelling. Little kids getting eaten by dragons. Okay, and I see, I can comprehend. I've just seen the dragons, right? Yeah. But then you think about for you and I to go build a fence. If I need to build a fence, I'm going to call you up and, and we're going to get a couple of buddies and a couple of yetis full of coolies, beers, okay, and we're going to go to Home Depot and get. And we're going to have it done in the afternoon. And? And this wasn't the case here. No. So I called Mark up and I said, Mark, this is going to cost us about a thousand bucks. I can cover it, but I'd love to partner with you on it. He said, I'm in. So a thousand bucks. This is just your initial idea. But that was nothing. Yeah. Compared to what it actually took. We had to get the village. I stood there and managed the whole deal. Stayed, stayed there over a couple of course in a couple of weeks. We got the villagers together. We had to go to a completely different island that was mountainous, go up into the highlands, chop bamboo, bring bamboo back over the course of two or three or four trips, pound, cut the bamboo, dip, 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 and we build a fence to keep the kids from eating from keeping the dragons from eating the kids. See, in my mind, you jumped on the boat, you came back to America, went to Home Depot. With the Home Depot! It probably would have been faster. But, you know, part of you what... built part the from... Oh, hold on, hold on, show me your hands. <laughs> I'm a working guy. Yeah, but you've still got soft hands. Hey, that kind of feels good. <laughs> <laughs> no. But everything that Yade Global does has... A, a it's hands-on. Is hands-on, but it also has a sustainability, resilience theory behind it. Meaning, give a man a fish, he uh, eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, give a man a fishing pole. So right now, as an example, you can, you've got me going, I can talk for hours. <laughs> right now, we are working on, in Dominica, which we've taken great care of in this, uh, because of the hurricanes, we have, they lost all of, about 90% of their fishing boats. That's a huge source of their economy. And what, well they all got smashed up or? Gone, just disappeared, gone. blown away. And so that, originally those boats came from where, here? Well, no, like they made them there. Oh, so they did, okay. They had the raw materials and made them there. We're in the process right now of gaining support to get all of the raw, we've got all the list of all the raw materials to build one boat and we're trying to get together the raw materials, the fiberglass, resin, the cloth, the nails, the hammers, to build 10 boats and ship that to Dominica so they can go to work and build the boats, yeah. get back out fishing, feed the village, have some economy, and that's what Yachty Global is all about. It's amazing, actually. You could look at that in a completely different way and say this is the greatest opportunity for Dominica to have its own boat building well, they industry. Well, they do, but they don't have any materials. Oh, so they've got the skills, they've got the facilities. Absolutely. Know. And this is where you... Fill the gaps, find the gaps. So and how we achieve this is building the relationships with the Dominica government. Right. When the storms first hit... This is Irma. Six months ago. Right. Hurricane Maria, Hurricane Irma. I got on the phone just out of the blue and picked up and called the Prime Minister of Dominica. And you picked up the phone? More or less, but I got access to him. Oh, okay. Four Pretty days cool. later, we had the assistant prime minister of Dominica standing shoulder to shoulder with me at the Fort Lauderdale boat show, telling the story firsthand of the devastation of the hurricanes. It's difficult because we were here during Irma and Maria didn't really play in, but trying to understand the devastation that these other places are going through. And it, I would imagine it's a 
decade process to try and you know, pull themselves out of it. And this is why what we're doing here, Norma and I, the Bob Saxons of the world and the, the senior leadership of this industry are all talking about right now. So when you take, you, what boat are you captain on? Most? It was a boat called Sailing Yacht Vivid. And I spent 12 years on that and we circumnavigated the world two and a half times up to the North Pole and down to so Antarctica. So how you put all these supplies on a sailing yacht? Well, that really wasn't important. I mean, what I, I spent, it was more <laughs> what we did when we were in the communities. For example, no. Okay. I talked to over 15,000 high school kids all over the world in every remote place I went. In English? No. I'd have a translator right beside okay. me. And I would teach, I would talk to them about finding their passion in life just like I did as a kid growing up sailing and was able to find my way to being, a, to being in front of them. That's how I got yeah. there. So your way into this industry was through sailing and the passion. 100%. Of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what age did you drop you know, out of school? Yeah, you know, but no, but seriously, I, I didn't graduate in co from college. No, most because, captains don't. <laughs> because I dedicated all my time to college sailboat racing and and yeah, say no more. Wow. So uh, it, it's it's amazing when you look at a charity and something like the Red Cross or. You know these other big charities you donate your money you have no idea where it's going or really how it's being and a lot of it i know is absorbed in administration and paying for your daughter's apartment in new york and whatever and her wedding and so on let's not get too political but it's quite it, seeing what you guys do is so close to where the money's sent or sorry when you give the money to you you can see how it works immediately and i think that's in terms of here's the thing right now <clears throat> you know We had, we were very fortunate because of the respect, reputation, and credibility that Mark and people like myself have created in the name Yade Global over the last 11 years. It's been 11 years? 11 years. That when this, when the storms hit six months ago, yeah. everybody in the industry was saying, we've got to react, we've got to respond, we've got to do something to take care of the islands. And they looked to Yachty Global to take the helm, to provide the leadership for the industry. And the results that we achieved through collaborative leadership were unbelievable. Through people like Norma and Bob Saxon and, and Fiona, all of the industry association leaders giving us credibility and backup. So the future for you guys is So really the future is this, that we're building, we're not taking credit and kudos and celebrating in those success. Is we're building on that momentum to change the culture of yachting, to include yachting social responsibility, to harness the power of this industry to do good. It's amazing. There almost could be, a, it sounds ridiculous, but a, a rule or some sort of legislation that on a boat you have to carry supplies. Well, it's an ethical obligation. I mean, and when you're... Yeah, exactly. Screw, so, screw government. It's an ethical obligation. But it takes somebody, and this is not about me, but I've been out there for, for 15 years in the most remote parts of the world. And I know the, what the act of kindness does. Yeah. I know what it does for me personally. And I know what it does for the image of that yacht that I, I, I came in off of. And to take that magic and sh just, it's, there's no sales involved. You get it. Everybody gets it. It's to show them how. And it's to provide that leadership or example how you do it. And that's where we're at today. I just, um, in January, I climbed Kilimanjaro. And I took two of these up to the top of the, well, <laughs> my porters took yeah, two of yeah, these. Yeah. And I m modified them with a backpack and everything. Yeah. And I gave them all the kits at the end oh, of it. Yeah. They were, they didn't, they didn't say thank you. They didn't know what the, yeah. They just couldn't yeah. compute yeah. it. So, so that, that moment right there, that moment right there, you will hold forever. You know? Yeah, because I thought I was doing something wrong. But they were they didn't know what and we didn't speak the same language. Yeah. It's a universal language right there, that gift yeah. of kindness, you know, and, and that act of kindness and But I know they're out there now climbing that mountain again with the stuff I gave them and they're able to earn a living by the stuff I gave them. You understand exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, so it's that feeling I and have your experience, and I got it on, and I got it on camera. Both handing the stuff Magic. to them, and they're Magic. both like, "Magic, 
Really? So, all right. So that moment is what your and your moment. Yeah. It's a hell of a feeling, actually, when you do do your something. Your experience for is entirely different. You know, it's so much more fulfilling and enhanced and rich and yeah, and engaging and engaging. Yeah. yeah. Oh, bloody hell. all right. So when's the next trip? <laughs> or, are they, or are they going on all well, the time? No, listen, this is what we're doing, and I, I've uh, I've committed to really a year of volunteering to build the business. So and, you're not working at the moment. No. I'm, I've been a full-time volunteer for Yachty Global for seven months right now, trying to to build this build this initiative and culture revolution. Wow! Somebody giving up their time for the yeah, but yeah. It, it it are you making up for something in a previous life? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do. We'll. <laughs> Just paying it forward. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when you, without getting too philosophical, when you, I mean, I'm so absolutely grateful. My life for the last 15 years has been off the charts. Mm -hmm. Off the charts amazing. And, I, and I, I, I honestly feel like I have a karma bank account, karma gas tank. And it's got to be balanced out, or I feel it, you know? I, I, for me to sustain this amazing life that I'm having, mm. the way to sustain it is to keep giving it back, keep giving it back, keep giving it back. So and it seems to be working so far, and to be grateful. So how, how do people become members? Is it you got a boat, you sign up, or is it captain Give us a call. Is it? We'll show you the way, absolutely. And okay. spread the word. All right. So how do um, you have yadeglobal.org? Yadeglobal.org. Yep, and follow us on Facebook. There's incredible stories of people doing this. Uh, incredible stories of what we've done in, in the last six months uh, in response to the hurricanes. And uh, like I said, we're building on that momentum right now to change the culture of the industry, to adopt where every, this is the norm. Instead of being, I guarantee you that, that a yacht crew, 10 years after, their time in the yachting industry, they're not going to remember the 200 nights in the bar. But they'll remember no. building a fence yeah. to keep the dragons from eating the kids. Or they're going to remember giving their kit to their supporter at the top of the mountain. Wow. I don't... This is about stewardship. Yeah. And, and as I research the word stewardship, you know, this world is a gift to us and everything in it. And stewardship means our responsibility to look after it. To care for the oceans, to care for the coastal communities, and care for the people in them. Well, good luck. Cheers. And whatever we can do well, to help pump out the I'm, message. I'm happy to have a new friend. I appreciate that, Lee. Absolutely. Awesome. 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 Hail to the